Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues for sticking around for the press conference. Um, obviously, they're very disappointed that uh, we haven't passed Medicaid. Um, this is something that I just believe is inevitable. It's, it's going to happen at some point. Um, we've again failed to create 24,000 jobs. We've held ideology over people getting health insurance. Uh, people that are working for a living, trying to put food on their family's tables, uh, send their kids to school, and instead we've played partisan politics. Um, at some point this is just going to happen, and uh, it's about time that we stop uh, pretending that it's not and playing these political games. Um, obviously disappointed in the override of the uh, tax code, or the tax cut. Uh, we felt like that was a uh, it was awfully hypocritical the first time in uh, dozens of years that we've actually begun to put money into the foundation formula to finally fund our public schools and then we cut $800 million out of the budget in a couple of years. Um, when are the children in the state going to become the priority over tax cuts for millionaires? Um, I don't have that answer. Um, and until the voters of the state decide that they've had enough, I think that's what we're going to continue to see. Um, school transfer issue was anything but a fix for the transfers. Uh, there were multiple things that could have been done. They did not do that. They put school children at risk. They attempted to destroy public education by putting vouchers on a transfer bill. They used these kids as a wedge to get what they wanted uh, for their own political agenda. And I look forward to the governor vetoing this bill. And I hope that he will. And I think I speak for the majority of my caucus when I say uh, we will stand by him if he does that. Um, and if that means coming back for a special session, well, then we'll, we'll get a short break from each other because we've, uh, we've been together for a while and we could use a little break. But uh, I'm sure that we would be very happy to come back for that issue. Um, some of the positive things, folks, supermajority in the House and the Senate, we beat paycheck, we beat right to work, number one priority for the Speaker, Lieutenant Governor, went down in flames. They can no longer keep saying that the way to economic prosperity is on the backs of workers. Um, a huge victory for organized labor, a huge victory for the Democratic Party by keeping those things in check. Um, and we're very proud of that. We're very proud of that fact. Um, at that time, uh, at this time, I'll take, open up questions. The, the transfer bill puts children in jeopardy, in, at risk or in jeopardy. How, how does it do I that? think it puts public education in general in jeopardy. Um, it's one step forward to complete vouchers. I mean, it is vouchers. Uh, that has nothing to do with the fix for the transfer issue. Okay. The plan to use the center room, a lot of things could be different when we come back in for a session next year. Could have new margins between the two parties, could have new, you've got a new speaker coming in. We're going to try and campaign for Medicaid in some of the areas where seats are challenged, campaign against Republicans throughout the state. How do you, how do you plan to use the center room? Well, obviously, we plan to use the center to try and increase our numbers. And uh, I'm very happy to say that all of our statewide elected officials are on board with helping us do that. And it's very wonderful to have a renewed uh, and uh, strong Democratic Party that's sole interest is putting more members of the Democratic Party into the legislature, into the House, into the Senate. Uh, that's their number one focus, and uh, we're very glad to see that. And absolutely, for those issues in Medicaid, look, Medicaid expansion helps people in my area. It helps people in all of our members' areas. Uh, but. I have Barnes Jewish Hospital in St. Louis City. Barnes Jewish Hospital is not going to close. But those small rural hospitals are going to close. Those are the ones that are most at risk. It is not an issue of urban Missourians being just the people on Medicaid. This covers the entire state. Um, it affects more rural areas than it does ours. And for them to say, well, it's not our issue, we don't care about it, these are their constituents they're hurting for. Medicaid expansion polls extremely high. 
it's just time to get it done. It's time to pass it. And we will ex absolutely take it to the voters and let them know what their legislators are doing and what they're not doing, more importantly. You said all statewide officials, does that include the governor? Yes, it is. It does include the governor, absolutely. And you've heard that from him? I've had conversations with the governor, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm very happy and grateful for his help in the future. The, the Fulton Hospital was funded this year, the transportation measure passed. What was the difference this year from last year on, on some of the infrastructure funding for Fulton? Well, I, I, I don't know why uh, things didn't get across the finish line last year. Um, Fulton Hospital is, quite frankly, an embarrassment to the state. And it's something that's been needed to be done for a very, very long time. Um, you know, we've had disagreements on how to actually fund it. Uh, we finally came to some conclusion. Um, I'm happy with the outcome. As far as, uh, what, what was the other part of the question? I'm oh, sorry. I, the, I, was just, I mean, the transportation. Oh, the transportation also, issue. Also you know, I... Look, at the end of the day, um, we found it extremely hypocritical that the members of the majority passed a huge tax cut uh, for the rich on the backs of the middle and lower income residents of the state and then asked for a massive tax increase. And so it gave us pause for a while. Uh, but at the end of the day, we felt comfortable enough that we recognize the need for transportation improvement. We, need, we recognize the need for infrastructure. Um, and we were willing to let the voters decide. Too many jobs at stake. Uh, and we're happy with the outcome. And uh, whether or not the voters approve it, that's, that's up to them. But uh, we're comfortable in our decision letting them make that decision. Sir, you, uh, you referred to the agenda this year as an extremist agenda and some of the issues you already talked about, of course. Do you see any difference between the outgoing speaker and the outgoing leadership and who you expect to have next year, expecting better results from that? I would hope so. Um, I would hope that the incoming speaker recognizes some of the ridiculous things that have come out of the legislature um, in the last couple of years. Um, Agenda 21, drones, I mean, I could go on and on. Um, hopefully he recognizes that. And only time will tell. Several of the governor's proposals that he outlined in the state of the state, he didn't get. Is there more in your mind you could have done to, to get his agenda passed? Um, such as picture? what would be? Uh, I mean, obviously Medicaid is one of the sure. big one. Sure. Another um, one was, I mean, the. You know, I'll, I'll give it to the governor. You know, last year he, he went out and, <coughs> and campaigned on Medicaid. Um, I think I think there is movement. I think we, if you look at what's happening. The more and more members of the majority are starting to see the light on Medicaid. I think if we would have had a vote on Medicaid on the floor where they were let, let free to vote their conscience, we would have had the votes to pass Medicaid expansion. Um, I will give credit to Senator Sylvie on the other cha in the other chamber. Um, he actively took that bill to the floor. Uh, Representative Barnes and Mullendorf have uh, tried over and over in their caucus to get that done. And, and I commend them for their effort. And every year we're getting more and more support. Um, and I just hope it's not too late. I mean, 700 people will lose their lives because we haven't expanded Medicaid. And I don't know how any single one of the majority members can go home, look their constituents in the eye and said, I let 700 people die because I don't like the president. Any issues that you see that warrant a special session at this point? Yeah, absolutely. Jenny, would you like to? Yeah, I think clearly <coughs> the um, transfer situation. We entered this legislative session with the transfer crisis facing the um, state, in particular St. Louis. And it's a crisis, mind you, that the speaker at the beginning of the session said didn't exist. We unfortunately are leaving this session with the same crisis facing our students. It is, um, we must fix this. We absolutely have to fix this. The speaker saw an opportunity to take a crisis and spin it for his own purposes, which he's been pushing the vouchers for some time. Our students, our children across the state deserve better, better than this. And I would add that the opposition to this voucher and this extreme agenda of education was bipartisan. We had bipartisan opposition to this. We had options on the table. Representative Lauer had a clean transfer fix. I offered a transfer fix in, um, in committee, as they were offered on the floor myself. Um, 
Representative Ann Beatty, Representative Hummel. We were not even allowed to present those views, and any time we tried to present those options, we were shut down. And I would ask, if their ideals are so popular, why is it that they have to voice the op or silence the opposition, and why were their members not allowed to um, vote their conscience? Because we heard time and time again from their members that there, there, were, there were the threats last year. We had members removed off of the committees. If your ideals are so good and your ideas are so strong, why is that you need to use heavy-handed tactics to be able to silence that voice? I was asked if I was going to speak the other day on the about from the transfer, so-called transfer bill. I was told no, I wanted my colleagues to be able to speak, and the floor leader told me that I better speak or they were they were going to PQ them anyway. Why were they afraid to hear the voice of Representative Ellington and Representative um, Carla May? These affect their districts directly affect their districts. They certainly affect my, my community and our area, but they affect theirs direct, directly. Why were they afraid to hear their voices? We across the state, I've heard from all of my superintendents, I've heard from my constituents, all of us, I don't think there's a superintendent in the state that supports this plan. Those people that understand education and what it takes to improve education outcomes <coughs> opposed this plan and yet they continue to refuse to take vouchers off the table. If that's not about agenda, then explain to me what it is about. So I, I would hope that the governor, I hope that he calls a special session and or we can get Desi to solve this problem. I want to personally thank the governor for his leadership in this role and his support of the children across the state. The Republicans were critical of the governorship for leader, leadership on this matter. He suggested he calls a special session. He needs to come back with a plan. We have a plan. There were, as I said, there were multiple plans. There are plans on the table. The problem that they have and what they dislike about that, it is a clean transfer fix. It addresses a single problem that we're facing the state. It is void of the agenda that they want to push and promote. <coughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I am uh, Tommy Pearson, and I'm the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, and I represent District 66. Uh, Riverview Garden, I represent the majority of Riverview Garden School District. We had an opportunity this session to really fix education, and we failed to do it. When we talk about job opportunities, bringing jobs to this state, what company want to come to a state where you have an unqualified workforce? And we have to educate every student in this state in order to attract the kind of businesses that, that, that the majority talk about. And, uh, and, and, and to do that, you must educate your students. We didn't do that. The problem in our schools are not on buses. The problem in our schools is in the classroom. And, we, and throughout this whole debate, nothing was said about fixing the classroom, creating a learning environment for our students. That's why we need to focus our time. And when we come back next session, I hope that we will. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Anything you want to see work done in the interim? We talked about a special session, but the issues you want to see study interim committees? You know, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Medicaid for just one second. We've had year after year we've had interim committees on Medicaid expansion. Um, all of my members that have served on those interim committees have come back and said every single place in the state where we went and had a meeting, 90 to 95 percent or better of the people that came to testify said they want Medicaid expansion. Do we need to have an interim committee for Medicaid expansion again? I don't think we probably, I don't think we do. I'm sure they will do that, uh, kick the ball farther down the field. Um, but it seems like all they're trying to do is punt. Um, we've heard from the citizens of the state. We've heard from the majority of the members in the House, and I think in the Senate, that if they would just allow their members to vote, that we would have it. So, I mean, there's, there's a wide range of issues, of course, uh, but, uh, you know, how much time do we waste on these interim committees and then nothing gets done in session? Enough wasting time. Let's just get it done. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.